today we shall be looking at the organization of the nervous system. The nervous system is known as the master controlling and communicating system of the body. Its nervous cells communicate by electric and chemical signals which are rapid and specific and usually cause an almost immediate response. And in this case, the nervous system has two divisions. The central nervous system, known as the CNS, and the peripheral nervous system, known as the P and S. The nervous system has three main overlapping functions, that is the sensory input, integration, and motor output. The sensory input involves the gathering of information from other organs, either inside or outside of the body, Integration, on the other hand, processes and interprets the sensory input that has been directed to the central nervous system and decides which action needs to be taken. And the motor output is usually a response to the integrated stimuli and this response activates muscles or secretory glands. Like said before, the nervous system comprises of the central nervous system that has the brain and the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system which houses the cranial nerves which are in 12 pairs and their branches and the 31 pairs of the spinal nerves and their branches. This nervous system has a sensory and a motor division. The sensory division is known as the afferent division afferent to mean carrying toward and the nerve fibers in the sensory division carry information into the central nervous system from the sensory receptors. And then the motor division known as the efferent division and efferent stands for carrying away. The nerve fibers of the motor division carry the impulses away from the central nervous system into the effector organs. This motor division has two subdivisions, the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. When we look at the organization of the nervous system, this diagram helps us to break down the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system together with their components. We start with the central nervous system comprising of the brain and the spinal cord and this is the major integrative and control centers. And then we have the peripheral nervous system or the PNS, which comprises of the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves and acts as a communication line between the central nervous system and the rest of the body. This peripheral nervous system can have the sensory division and the motor division. The sensory division conducts impulses from the receptors to the peripheral nervous system and then to the central nervous system. This sensory division involves the somatic and visceral sensory nerve fibers. On the other hand, the motor division or the efferent division comprises of the motor nerve fibers which conduct impulses from the central nervous system to the effector organs which include the glands and the muscles. And in the motor division, we have two subdivisions, that is the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is an involuntary somatic motor bit of the motor division that conducts impulses from the central nervous system to the skeletal muscles that you voluntarily control. On the other hand, the autonomic nervous system is an involuntary system that conducts impulses from the central nervous system to visceral organs which are the cardiac muscles of the heart, smooth muscles uh, of the small intestines that help in peristalsis and secretory glands, for example the thyroid gland and the adrenal glands. Then this autonomic nervous system can also be subdivided into two divisions that is the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division. The sympathetic division mobilizes the body system during the flight or fight activity. And then the parasympathetic nervous system 
conserves the energy. This parasympathetic division promotes housekeeping functions of the body during rest. When looking at this image, it's also an illustration of the nerve transmission between the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. For example, from the peripheral nervous system, we have receptors, exteroceptors, proprioceptors, and interoceptors, which uh, receive the stimuli and then transmit it into the sensory neurons in the peripheral ganglia of the peripheral nervous system through the afferent fibers and then transmitted to the central nervous system, crosses the interneurons in the central nervous system and the information is processed and an appropriate motor impulse is stimulated, which is directed through the somatic motor neurons or the visceral motor neurons in the central nervous system. And the impulse or the motor impulse that is generated and directed to the somatic motor neurons in the central nervous system goes to the efferent fibers innervating the skeletal muscles and on the other hand the visceral motor neurons in the central nervous system transmit this motor activity or the motor impulse into the visceral neurons located in the peripheral motor ganglia through a preganglionic fiber and through and from the visceral motor neurons this motor impulse is then directed to the visceral effectors involving the smooth muscles, glands, cardiac muscles of the heart, and the adipose tissue. Let's look at the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is generally a system that responds to unusual stimulus. For example, the fight or flight cases and it takes over to increase activities. And for you to remember the effects of the nervous system, for you to remember the effects of the sympathetic nervous system, you need to remember it as the E division. That is the exercise, excitement, emergency, and embarrassment. Okay, when we look at the sympathetic nervous system, let's see its effects. Number one, the sympathetic nervous system will dilate the pupils. It will inhibit salivation, relax the bronchi, but accelerates the heartbeat, inhibit digestive activity, but stimulates glucose released by the liver, and also stimulate the secretion of epinephrine and norepinephrine from the kidneys, that is the adrenal glands. It will relax the blood and contract the rectum. When you see these effects, these are the activities which will take place in any case you are in a fight or flight situation. Those ones are controlled by the sympathetic nervous system. And on the other hand, the parasympathetic system maintains the daily necessary body functions. For you to remember the effects of this parasympathetic nervous system, maybe you can use the mnemonic or uh, the D division for the parasympathetic nervous system. D standing for digestion, defecation, and diuresis. Those ones are not just the only ones which it controls, but when you look at the parasympathetic nervous system, it's the one that constricts the pupils. It stimulates salivation for you to prepare for digestion. It inhibits the heart rate for you to relax, constricts the bronchi, stimulates digestive activity in the stomach and the intestines, and then stimulates the gallbladder to produce and release uh, to release those uh, bile juices and then contracts the bladder allowing diuresis and relaxes the rectum muscles to allow defecation those are the uh, clear overview of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system in this other image, it also gives you an outlook of the controls and the effects of the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system using these two diagrams.